as looking at how much resources will be needed. I'm recording. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no problem. How much resources is going to be needed, and also how much of that was in our capability to reproduce um, a simple to use um, tool for primarily the authors on YouTube, and then long term any video like a call like we on now or any video that needs this caption file to be created. So the good news is that um, the entire pipeline uh, is possible. And we have also the infrastructure and expertise within our small team to cover it without going outside of the team. So that's that's good because of the cost factor for something specialized like this. Um, and then what Ravni is going to show you is a local um, basic interaction with, with a script that they've built. Uh, which we will need to put onto a website and make it easy for the user. But right now, what you're looking at is an actual computer where there's a uh, rev need to set this up. And yeah, I was just going to show you the first step um, of what we've actually done. But besides this, uh, yeah, we're quite excited because I, th I think we could have a really good uh, feature for this YouTube problem. Um, I would say in the next six weeks, uh, comfortably. So um, that's that's sort of an I hit our goal. And after you know you guys sort of brought this to our attention and requested it, we feel that either way, it's a feature that is, doesn't seem to be properly done at the moment. So you know we're quite excited just to 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 build it, not just for you guys, uh, but in general, uh, because I really, really found it near impossible to get a, a proper SRT file for YouTube once you have uploaded the video and you just can't go back. Um, so yeah, Ravni, just share your screen when you're ready. Let's let's just show them how I have simple to give, it is. Uh, really. I have to give Ravni permission to share a screen. I'm doing that now. Okay. You should be good, Ravni. I like to keep things very simple. So you just need to paste a YouTube link and you will get your SRT file. That's it. And we will also expand our scope to any video, like suppose you, we all are having meetings. So in future, all you need to do is here is just upload this uh, Zoom call uh, on our platform and just download the SRT file. This Amazing. can be possible. Amazing. This will be possible for all of the, uh, this will be possible for every video which has an audio. Right now, our prototype works on like just YouTube videos. So, you know, we can just search anything. And uh, right now our solution is quick and it's one of them. like, this is an example, just a Python video. It has the titles and it is, I think of six hours. So we will, okay. just, we will just lively download this video. So every YouTube video has an ID. So right now we will copy this ID and we will run our script. Uh, we have created a script. So just a second, let me explain. Activate the script. Can you post that uh, YouTube link in the chat as well, please? Sure. I will post it after this. Uh, okay. Now, all I have to do is just, right now, it's a simple command line interface, but later we will expose the API for it. So APIs and even a web interface will be built where you will be just, you know, uh, just- We'll put it on marketplace, basically. It'll be simple yes. as you do documents. So this interface is just asking for a video ID that we just copied and we will paste it here. And it's done. It's a six hour video completed within a second. What? Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. And wow. if you open, yeah, Doug, things will be simple. For you. What a reaction from Doug. <laughs> yeah. Mind blown. And, and this is like, if we go down there, this is 18,000 line size. Wow. And it has approximately 4,500 uh, 4, <coughs> sentences. So this is how SRT file look like. This is a index. This is timestamp. And what sentence will be, you know, shown at this time set. So zero to four, this will be shown. Four to eight, this will be shown. Eight to 12, this will be shown. Right. I, Wait, I what are you saying? This will be short, what? Shown. Shown, shown. shown. Start, yeah. start shown. and stop times. Got it, got it. Start got it. and stop time, right. Uh, and this is the link. We can also, you know, try for another thing. Wait, wait, I gotta, I, could I stop there for a second? Go to that sure. link that you, um, so yeah. the, the YouTube channel has to initiate subtitles 
in order for this to work. Is that correct? No. He's saying it's pulling if, it out of the audio, if, right? If it has the subtitles, that's good and fast. If it don't have subtitle, our system will also manage this and we will generate it for you. The final product will have this feature. Can you, can you matter. click uh, settings on this video? Right now, this video has a subtitle. And then go to subtitles, uh, expand subtitles. Yes. This uh, no, no, my point is this video has subtitle, but this is just a prototype. The final solution that we will be providing, you just need to paste a YouTube link. On the file. That's it. Doesn't matter the video has subtitle. The subtitles are on, the subtitles are off. That doesn't matter. How, how is that possible? If they don't uh, have the subtitles, how are you getting the subtitles? Uh, we use uh, Google speech to text APIs. So oh, yeah, it I has see. audio. Yes. Okay. And the, this is the reason we can do it for any audio. Like we all are recording this call. We upload the video somewhere wow. because we, we also need to do it apart from YouTube. Everything yeah, is not I on think, YouTube. I think what, what we also found is that it's, we're going to make it very simple because we will run, we will use Google, but we'll run our own server to do the processing, which is, you know, a couple of GPUs really, depending on how much of this resources uh, we're going to expand to. But immediately for your needs, for example, it's really not a big hardware setup, but right. we are going to use Google to do the legwork and actually extracting uh, uh, the uh, English from, from the, the audio. But we will need to process it um, on our side, um, and right. that's that will take a little bit of resources. But when when you log into TransAB Market, for example, let's just say that's the home of of the user's interaction, <clears throat> he will do simply add the link, and then the system will see if there's an SRT file. If there is, it'll give it to them. If there's not, it'll say processing. But actually, what's happening is it's busy pulling the video down to our server, then giving it to Google. And then Google's giving us the SRT file, and then the customer or the user, he just ends up with the file. Then he can move to translation, which is the easy part. The the hard part really is this is the step making it simple. But what I love about what Ravnish Danya is that you, he doesn't need to also in some cases where the SRT file does exist in his author, you know, because he's done it correctly. He also doesn't have to go there and get it and download it and then upload it to us. It's still going to be just a simple link. But in that case, it doesn't use the full resources of our system. It goes straight into the language a translation and the UR for the translators to work on that. Sounds so um, does the SRT file that's generated by, if it was not present on YouTube, is it going to be the same SRT because it's using the same engine? Because the quality of the English base being you know, critically important, I guess there's not really any variation. Um, but then my next question is, what about diarization? What about like thinking future? It, can we separate the speakers in the text and create BTTs? Or is that like, because we're because basically we're writing on the back of the Google API. So unless we have another API that we want to piggyback off of that could do that, we're not developing our own for like diarization or anything like that. Uh, I'd no. like to add one more thing here. So Google gives you, do you know, this just text. Uh, Google has a API that give that translate audio to text. That's it. We right. add this, you know, start time and time and indexing and made a ah, compatible SRD file. This processing you. will be done on TMN servers. Mm -hmm. And the, due to this processing, we will expose our own APIs, not Google APIs. Got you. And uh, what about making a version of this with no SRT timestamps and just pure text for Jesse to make into a yeah. document or modify? You it shouldn't be, that, shouldn't be that hard, I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, it's not hard. It's, it's easier, but we have a better idea. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So we will provide you an interface where user won't be able to, you know, change, uh, edit these things. Although some, this whole screen will be visible, this indexing and timestamp won't be editable to any user, but only the text will be editable. Because sometimes, uh, see, like if we look here, this sentence, like cool things like automation, this doesn't complete here. This starts here, but ends here. So people can make a mistake if they go sentence by sentence. Yeah, it, it needs to be structured when they're going to work on this later. But but that's, again, that's the easy stuff. Uh, the 
the UI for that and the um, and ultimately the translation, whether it be by machine or, or ESPs, those are things that are, are um, pretty much uh, in place, except that instead of doing a document, they're going to be doing a, a, a file that doesn't let them lose their place and damage the structure, the time frame, um, but can still interact with the sentences where they should be. That's excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so like I said, I think the biggest validation for me is the um, capacity for us to do this without involving anyone else. That was the big worry. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and we're going to move forward with it anyway. If there's some incentive on our side, we will gladly take it. Um, and that I'll leave to you, Jesse. But the big thing is we do want to work with you guys and we do want to be constructively seen as as not just, you know, translate me for themselves, but also we want to get into this EOS community. And the only way to do that properly is to actually, you know, produce value, um, which is the whole reason we went on Pomelo. So, but I mean, a lot of that direction we'll get from you, but I'm really stoked about what Revneeds and the team have come up with. Yeah, I think that, um, especially now that you can show the work, if you can just uh, bill your time and we'll try to get that uh, uh, compensated through the ENF. Okay. So send me yeah, some like numbers. I said, we can... send, send a, um, when it's, I, I'm not sure like the exact uh, point to maybe make a, a demo video. Maybe you want to see some UI first before you do it. Um, yeah. No, we won't. But if you could send a demo I... video and then your build hours, and then we can try to build yeah. that to the ENF. Okay. Well, that's a good, that's a good uh, uh, option. I mean, we'll look at that definitely. And we can, I, I, you know, for us, we're not in a big rush to finish this, but six weeks goes like that. Um, so we'll focus on it, get us a lot, a lot of it done, and then um, as close as possible, we get to a functional product. We'll do maybe a little uh, short video and get it presented properly, um, so that maybe you can use that in your own circles too. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that you have to present before we go on to the next topic? Uh no, that was that was our main focus for now. Um, obviously, everything else is the wheels are turning on Translate Me side. But yes, we did apply a bit uh, of effort here. So for now, that's the that's our news. <laughs> that's great. our update. It's great yeah. to hear. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions on what Ryan presented before we go on to the next topic? Excellent. Okay. So. I've been doing uh, some research. I'd like to get your feedback on Ryan Revneed and everyone here. I've been obsessing over subtitles and uh, particularly uh, YouTube podcasters and crypto influencers and the non-existence of subtitles or at least cleaned up English version of subtitles. I'm just banging mm -hmm. my head against the wall. What is going on here? No one translates their subtitles that I've researched, yeah. like the, the video that Ravneet just showed, this guy custom translated his subtitles into seems like seven or eight languages there. And he's yeah. got millions of subscribers. We have Mr. Beast, who's taking it a step further and he has a different YouTube channel dubbed in languages. Like, and he is the number one guy on YouTube. But I, okay. um, I have one of my best friends, he works, in the, in the networks, NBC, he's worked at uh, CBS. They only do English. They don't translate their subtitles. And yeah. so we already have a proof of concept that some of the top guys are translating their subtitles. And of course, with YouTube, it's all about views is money for these people. If they get more views, they get more money. And so um, if they trans, so one of the objections I can, so we're going to be approaching these guys very soon. And one of the objections I can imagine from them is why would I translate my subtitles into Vietnamese? We don't have any Vietnamese viewers. We can't access the Vietnamese market. Well, that's where EOS bees comes in and that's where our swarms come in. And I'll just quickly describe our swarms as a way for them to get more views on their video content. Now we have a uh, reach so, we're just in the crypto space now. Uh, I'd like to move into general uh, celebrities in these markets, but let's just take Vietnamese, for example. We've researched Vietnamese influencers. We have an algorithm that rates 
these Vietnamese influencers based on various variables. And so um, we could say, we're gonna do a swarm for your content. Let's take your video. We're gonna create uh, six KPIs. We're gonna have all our Bs. We're gonna have around, looking like around 500 Bs at the moment. Like and retweet, we're gonna tweet it out. We're gonna like and retweet that content. Every hour, a bee is going to reply to the influencer or every other hour, we'll do a 12 hour swarm. Every other hour, the bees will reply on Twitter, tagging the influencer, um, explaining this KPI that the copyright team has written. Now the influencer is going to see that content and may um, engage. And if, the, if that influencer does engage, then that brand can potentially make a deal with that influencer. Maybe the influencer just retweets it and his followers see it. And so um, this whole mechanism um, is a way for these YouTube content creators to access these other language markets and to get more views for their videos. And I see this as um, a legitimate business opportunity. And um, I, I'll stop there to get your feedback. Mainly, why don't more people translate their subtitles? My answer is that no one knows about it properly. Yeah, they don't, I agree. They, they, yeah, they just people they people don't just know do what they an option. Yeah, people just do what everyone else does, and if they don't think outside of the box or look at what other options there are, if it's there's no trend. But the number one guy is doing it, Mr. Yeah, B. yeah. So so well, there's lots of smart. answers to this question, <laughs> That's why and it's one. divided. It's divided into the people that you're asking the question. If you could ask all eight billion people at once, why don't you use subtitles? You're going to get a lot of different answers. So. You have to put them into different boxes. The biggest box, I think, is that there's a lot of people that don't know about it. And then the next box for me is probably that they do know about it, but they, they, they don't feel like it's necessary, as you said. And if you want to go further down, they do know about it. They feel like it's necessary, but they don't like the fact that right now it's automated and it's not good enough. And then you want to fix it, but it's just too much work. So you might have to focus on solving that. But there are three reasons I've tried to put myself in three different shoes or three different people's positions. And those are three that I think are, are probably top of the list. Um, but you are absolutely right. And it's why we've been working on, on Transfer Me. There's such a fundamental change to the service or product when it's now available um, uh, or accessible to people that for, for whatever reason couldn't interact with that because they can't speak the same language. Right. And so, right. Yeah, go ahead. Anyone else have a point yeah. on that? Well, Ryan, I'd like to ask you, uh, would you not assume also it has something to do that we all speak English, the primary dominant language on planet earth is English or off it is. And so people of other cultures often find them in the situation where they want to translate to English, but us in the English speaking world, we're so arrogant. We're like, everybody should speak English. You know, I think there's some- It's actually not the dominant body. language. Well, I mean, yeah. just in the do, I mean, dominant language, dominant language in terms of the uh, our culture in America and like a global culture in terms of like Hollywood yeah. and you know banking or something. It's not a commercial language. Yeah, it's a commercial it's a, language. Yeah. Commerce, yeah. Yes. Commercial like language, look at the yeah. docs. Look at all the docs for software. What is it in? You know. Yeah. yeah. Can I mistake so, you, Justin? When you said um, the bees would help uh, explain the content, it would be like a learning. Yeah, so we want to write the main benefits of that content, what's cool about it, what you can learn about it, how it helps you. And we use those uh, text, those written text as the reply to the tweet when we tag the influencer so the influencer can see the benefit. But there's another point here, and that's the, the labor and the pricing. So these are two points now I want to move to. So I did a test with my bees. I asked them to um, compare translating an article. So when you have an article, there's, there's different sentence structures than when you have a transcription, when we're talking. We talk differently than we write. And my bees reported to me that it's about half the effort to translate subtitles than an article. Now, when you look at the pricing, now, this is, of course, uh, publicly available pricing. I've seen the highest I've seen was 20 euros a minute. More, I've seen $3 a minute. I've seen $5 a minute. I've seen $7 a minute. Um, 
So I'm just imagining part of maybe the reason why they don't translate subtitles, it's quite expensive. Um, but I did some like us at the bees, like we are, we have a lot of languages and one of the criticisms you can say of the bees is that we onboarded too many languages too quickly. So we've always been very strapped for funds. And so- Are we talking about transcribing now? audio to text before we translate the, the, here's the thing though there's there's like you look for subtitles all the subtitle uh websites that are offering subtitle services it's all about transcribing like there is i, I have not seen a service that like okay just translate subtitles i saw one translate subtitles yeah. so yeah. Um, it's really all translating because because the thing is is that transcribing has been deprecated by YouTube's voice to text. There's no transcribing. It's been completely disrupted in my view. The transcription industry. It's all voice. Yeah. So you're skipping that. You, you're going to use the machine to do that for you. That's what you're going to do in this case. Right. And yeah. so, um, I, so when you talk about per minute, you're talking about the, the length of the video now, not per sentence or per word. That's, it's that's the same really what thing. you're talking about. Like it, yeah. per word, per minute, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The point mm -hmm. that I'm trying to make is that all of these prices do not factor in the AI advancements in voice to text mm -hmm. when you look at transcription prices, because this is relatively new, I guess, in the last five years. And so... That's just another point to make about the legitimate business opportunity this is because we can come in at, at much lower than what the client can research themselves. And so I wanna get your feedback on the, on the first point that I made. Do you, like, uh, do you agree that translating subtitles is less effortful than translating an article? Um, um yeah like to jump in here the answer is yes uh let me share my screen again so you know this is just an example so if we see how much sentences are there in a minute the answer is approximately 12 and the market is kind of inflated here everyone know videos are precious so what they do is they kind of in, you know intentionally increase the price it's kind of inflated thing but if we go word or character translation, they should be like at least 50% to 60% off. But people know that videos are important, important for the people. It's the same thing that the party will pay, so the you know translator will ask for it. It's the same thing. But yes, the same translator, if he translates the article, he will charge less price. Instead of video, he will charge more price. It's the same thing. This is my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to say also that in conversation, we, we're generally just um, using a very small vocab, um, you know, because that, because it is a light conversation and it's not exactly put out into uh, a publication that's going to have scrutiny for, you know, articulation right. and grammar and all that sort of thing. So there's, there's a sort of, there is a level of translation that's needed that's a little bit higher than general conversation. If you specialize in in a specific topic, for example, or maybe it's a legal document, you know, there's absolutely gonna be more pressure to get this right. Whereas a conversation on YouTube, especially it's as and when, and, and we probably use you know 500 words in, in total vocab to get that whole thing done. Um, that's, that's the interesting thing about English. Um, we use about 3000 words out of 150,000 that are available, yet that's 95% of how people talk. And that's the volume, that's the bandwidth of, of their vocab. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I would say it's cheaper, but I mean, obviously your goal is to, to be as low as possible to make this affordable so that scale can be achieved. And many people then want to, and from a bulk point of view, when you're processing that much information, then cheap is, is a good thing. Um, because you've, you've ignited the, you know, the, the industry's interest now. Um, but I, I think that, um, you're going to. You're going to always be battling with that. That's an ongoing thing. It's a, it's a, it's who you're working with. It's the quality that you're dealing with that you're going to have to check. It's the variant changes in, in, in just day to day. I mean, 
uh, I mean, even just this year, everything is going up. So your your translation costs are going to change. Uh, but getting it as low as possible is, is wouldn't be the you know the only thing to focus on. Obviously, as you know, quality is is the other problem that you you're going to have to tackle. Yeah, and um, no, I totally agree. Uh, we I rely on um, trusted you know trusted. These are people that have been in the community for years and care about the content. And uh, I know I DM'd you before, Ryan, like, oh, that's not such a big deal for us. But yeah. um, it would be good to, because you know, you had mentioned before that you have a whole, I mean, you have a very interesting system that, I mean, I haven't heard you talk so much about, but I, what I remember you saying is that you have like 11 out of 21 agree on the quality, then it passes. Like this is, um, can, you, yeah. can you speak more about that? So fundamentally for us to issue value to the individuals, um, we've got to validate that data that we're collecting. So that's been primarily the biggest problem that we're solving. A lot of the other stuff that we're working on is, is what everyone else is doing. What we're doing different is we're validating the data without a human in the loop. So to do that, we use consensus via multiple individuals but not just that, there's layers of testing those individuals and making sure that their reputation is, is part of the factor of whether the sentence is translated correctly or not. So it's a medley of, of, of really um, appro a, a, approach techniques to make sure that without checking the data, it comes out correct. Um, so we use voting, we use suggestions, we use um, analysis of past work, we use uh, crowd uh, f uh, work at, at the same time on the same document. Uh, there's even some tests that we've thrown in there. We've, we really, just as what we're doing a lot of is just to validate the data coming out the other side. Once you do that, then you start ending up with clear indications of which translators are very good and which are not. And then when you have that, you don't need to follow the same principles for validating data. You just need to um, uh, give them some uh, some tests that are necessary still, but you can dumb that down a lot more because now you've got a much trusted source for translating your document. So instead of using 11, for example, for our initial stages, we could probably use two or three, uh, let's say highly recommended or, or reputation as high um, to do the, the work. And incidentally, your Persian document, although we didn't have um, enough translators, since then we've pulled a few together. Um, we need to get to a certain level to be able to have them validate each other. And now we've extracted some some very, very clear differences between uh, the guys that are, should not be doing this and the guys that are absolute gems to to have, you know, part of my team. Um, so I, I'll sh I'm still working on that document, by the way, just for the fun of proving, you yeah. know, this point, which is you had that translated by someone how much of that is actually like real for you? How do you how do you know that? And and we that's been a little task that we've been tasked with. Unfortunately, Persian is is one where we didn't have enough translators, so we actually had to build up a few. But I'm going to come back to you on that. Um, and I think that yeah, we could certainly. I think it's one of the biggest things that we'll be able to work with you on in your path to to really helping EOS legitimately translate wider bandwidths of content but keep the quality still very nice and narrow totally totally i think that's a a very um logical partnership for us um yeah you know, i'm gonna throw it out there also jesse sorry to yeah. interject i think that there's a tokenization um process that we're using that you should probably be looking at um from your side uh in a way that, that we can we can actually join the process because one of your cost factors is paying these guys. And that cost factor uh, is a problem for you guys right now. But we, we've incentivized translation through the idea of reputation, um, a, central, a, a platform that's very unique for translators in terms of passive income. And maybe we should have a, a, you know, a follow-up call to really analyze that and see how much of that we could, we could bring to the table on, on your side. So I have uh, legal advisors on my team and yeah. they are against a token, a, a okay. created token. There are significant uh, legal risks, especially um, because 
Um, I live in the United States. EOSBs is incorporated in the United States. And so um, the token is an, is an issue for us um, at this oh, point. Really? Yes. Um, okay. we, you, we could talk more about how you created the token, how it's allocated, and I can get feedback on that. But I'm just saying yeah. upfront that yeah. we're very um, wary of, of new tokens. Yes. But I, I think um, even if the token doesn't work out, EOSBs, I believe that we are capable of um, getting work. So getting translation work. And yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense to have a validation process and explain all how that works, how we, how we can certify for sure that this is a quality process. That's something we're missing right now. Mm. And okay. so let me just... Let me circle back just for a second. Um, yeah. Do you agree that translating subtitles for YouTube creators, especially podcasters, is perhaps the biggest opportunity in the translation space? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, honestly, you could you could have work coming out of your ears if you get that right. Um, yeah. It's a massive, massive area. Okay. Okay. We're going to, um, obviously, it's massive, and we're going to need all the help we can get. Um, my general feelings and how this relates to EOS, because this doesn't necessarily relate to EOS. We are EOSBs. We are dedicated to EOS. And how I'm thinking mm. about this is, first of all, I think it's good for EOS if EOSBs can get work without relying on EOS inflation. Yeah, definitely. And um, if we are able to get, let's say they pay in dollars, we convert that to EOS and we pay our Bs in EOS. And so um, I would just, I think we should uh, talk more on two things. One about the validation, how we can hook up with the validation and two, we could talk more about your token. I can get some legal advice um, whether we can um, participate with your token. And uh, Yo. that's just where I wanna leave it for now. Okay. Well, yeah, I think that was pretty good. I don't have anything else to add for now. Cool. Um, I, I also, I'm going to send you guys more info on our swarms. Um, I don't know if my description made a lot of sense, but uh, it's something that's going to, I believe, uh, catalyze this translation work. And so um, I will send more info on that shortly. Awesome. Anyone else have any uh, closing thoughts? I um, just want to let you know, I put that uh, map on my EOS index site. I just want to make sure you're okay with it. And I wanted to credit Bishop for it too. Yep. Yep. Okay. Credit Bishop, credit EOSBs. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll put some meta tags in there. Cool. Awesome. Well, this is exciting. Um, I just want to let you guys know, I have some long-term plans about how I want to create a relationship with real existing schools, public schools and universities to get uh, this language translation sort of thing, tapping into their student base, maybe in some way to where like you have a teacher, like maybe a class has something to review and the teacher vets the reviews, you know, and making an interface for that to where they're getting a, they're doing it for free just as a learning experience to participate in this. But maybe we could gift them, you know, something as instead of the tokenization model, you know, as, as a form of rewards or compensation. And then we get the nonprofit aspect in there too, you know. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to muddle us down with that kind of thought. I'm just thinking that way right now, just so you know. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. That's cool, though, for sure. All right, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, special thanks to Ryan and, and Rip Neat for that amazing tool that you demoed. Super excited about that. Yeah, that and, was awesome. Uh, yep, we did too. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to that. All right, so we'll uh, keep it live on the Telegram group, and then, yeah, we'll, we can put those two topics on for the next call. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank right. you. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.